Hello everyone. I'm Han Ning Liu from Shanghai Jiaotong University. Today I'm presenting our paper, Push the Limit of Valence Universal Circuits, Simpler, Tight, and More Compact. This is a joint work with Yu Yu, Su Yao Zhao, Jiang Zhang, Wen Ning Liu, and Zheng Kaihu. Universal circuits can be seen as general purpose circuits. For any circuit C, of size up to N, we can efficiently encoding C with control B's PC, such that the universal circuit configured under PC is functional equivalent to the original circuit C. For any circuit C of size up to N and fine in fact 2, Venian proposed a construction of universal circuit of size 19 N log N. Universal circuits can be seen as graph object called H universal graphs, EOG in short, and the size of EOG is 4.75 n log n. As we will say, the size of a UC is roughly four times that of the corresponding EOG. Before our work, the best size efficient EOG has size of 4.5 n log n. And it is known to be the low bound by 3.64 n log n in the Venian framework. In this work, we give a construction of H universal graphs of size 3 n log n. And we also lower bound the size of our UG by 2.95 n log n under our framework. Notice that. The size of our UG is even smaller than the lower bound in Venian framework, which is not contradiction because our construction is not under Venian framework. A natural application of the universal circuit is, the, is to preserve functional privacy in multi-party computation. A multi-party computation can preserve input privacy. For example, Alice has input X and Bob has input Y. Multi-party computation can guarantee that Alice and Bob can get the result CXY and link no further information about inputs. The protocol guarantees the input purposes of the Bob and Alice. However, in some situations, we may want to preserve functional purposes which can be achieved based on universal circuits. For example, Bobo has an input algorithm C, then Bobo can encode in C into the configuration stream PC of the universal circuit. The problem reduces to the multi-party computation of evaluation of a public function UC on input X and the configuration stream PC in the end. The purposes of input X and algorithm C is preserved. Universal circuit can be seen as edge universal graphs. Here, I want to introduce edge inbounding and edge universal graphs. Edge inbounding can be seen as injection from graph G to another graph G star. The edge inbounding including two paths. First, it maps from the lot set V to V star one by one. Then, it maps every edge in G to a path in G star in a way that is edge disjoint, meaning that every two paths in G star have no common edge. Notice that there are two types of loads in G star. The bigger one, called the polar loads, is mapped from a load in G. And the smaller one that have no premises in V. Such nodes can exact because the load, the map is only an injection, not a backjection. G star is called an EOG if and only if any DAGG of size N and phi in file D can be edge inbounded into G star. We typically set 
flying field of DAGD to one or two. Rainier's framework, including three steps. First, reducing universal circles to EOG2, namely, edge universal graph for any DAG of flying field 2. Second, reducing EOG2 to EOG1. Finally, reducing the problem of construction of EOG1 to itself, but with a much smaller size. And the, this reduction is recursive. Until the underlying EOG1 is smaller enough and can be constructed by hand. Here, we introduce the fourth step, reducing UC to EOG2. The left figure is a circle with two inputs, x, y, and two gates, x or end, and two outputs. The circle can be seen as a DAG. The right figure is a universal circle, which can be seen as a DAG, an EOG. We showed the edge inbounding from the DAG in the left figure to the EOG in the right figure. In the left figure, the node side including x, y, x or and. In corresponding, in the right figure, we can also say x, y and x or, which are called polar nodes. The EOG including other smaller nodes called control nodes. First, the control load with one input and two outputs is called split, which copies the view of the input to the two outputs. Second, the one with two inputs and two outputs, we call it X switch, which can be configured into two cases, switch or unload switch. Finally, the control load with two inputs and two and one output, we call it Y switch, which also works in two cases. Copy the view of the left input to the output, or copying the view of the right input to the output. An X switch can be implemented by four basic gates. A Y switch can be implemented by three basic gates, and a, a universal gate can be implemented by three Y switch. For example, X switch needs one control bit C. If C is set to zero, then it becomes a long switch, left in, left out. Otherwise, it works in the switch models left in, right out. Here, we introduce the second step, reducing EOG2 to EOG1. Every instance of DAG2 can be divided into two instances of DAG1, which can be edge inbounded by two instances of the corresponding EOG1. We merge the, the two EOG1 into a single EOG2. For each DAG1, we edge inbounding it into an instance of EOG1. Finally, we compile two instances of EOG1 into one instance of EOG2 by eliminating the overlapping polar loads. Therefore, the size of EOG2 is two times of the size of EOG1, and minus the number of overlapping polar loads, which is n. The final step, reducing EOG of grid size n to EOG of smaller size, typically divided by a factor k. We can repeat this step many times until the size is smaller enough. Before introducing this reduction, we showed two important notions used in this reduction. 
augmented DAG and super low. First, the augmented DAG can be seen as a super DAG. First, for example, DAG G has K nodes P1 to PK and some edges. The augmented DAG can add K input nodes and K output nodes. Then, the augmented DAG can add some edges. Add from an input node to a load in the middle, or from a load in the middle to the output node. As long as the resulting augmented DAG is still of the grade 1. Now, with the augmented DAG, we can define the notion of KV superlow. A KV superlow or SNK in short is a special EOG that can edge inbound any augmented DAGK. For example, the above figure is an augmented DAG with four polo nodes, four input nodes, four output nodes, and the below is a corresponding four-way super low. As defined previously, edge inbounding mapping including loading node mapping and a edge mapping to a path. For example, edge B mapping to a path from edge B5 to edge B9. Now we review variance recursive reduction from EOG of size n to EOG of size n over k, which is achieved based on the building block kv super low. First, we put n over k super lows in rows. Then, we merge the output nodes of each super node with the input nodes of the next immediate super node component wilds. These merged nodes can be divided into key sites. For each site, for each site, we use the smaller EUG1 to combine this combination nodes and the polos of the smaller EUG1 one by one. The resulting merged nodes have two inputs and two outputs which can be implemented by X-switch node. It can be proved that any DAG of size N can be edge inbounded into this graph, this graph. And therefore, it gives a construction of EOG. Variant proposed two kinds of super nodes, two-way super node of size 5 and four-way super nodes of size 19. Note that the input and the output nodes are not counted into the size of super node. The result into the corresponding EUG of size 5 n log n and 4.75 n log n respectively. Our construction does not follow Venian framework. The left hand is a Venian framework and the right hand is our intermediate construction. The difference between the two construction is that in Venian framework, we combine the output node of the above super node and the input node of the next below super node into a single node which will then matched it matched with the polo of the smaller EOG. Well, in our intermediate construction, we combine the input node and the output node of the same super node into a single node and merge it with a polo of the smaller EOG. It is easy to say that Bostovinian framework and our intermediate construction are about the same size and both achieve edge inbounding. But we don't seem to 
accomplish any improvement with, with, the, with this intermediate construction. We have two observations about our intermediate construction. First, node A is an X wedge, which have two options, but it is unnecessary that a past and the smaller UG slot edge number four, then leave it intermittently. In other words, if a path has edge number four, then its next edge must be edge number three, not edge number two. Second, if a path passes through the load A from inside the smaller EUG, then it will end the corresponding super low. In other words, H1 will be followed by H number 2, not H number 3, on the path for H inbounding. Therefore, the option for x wedge node is always fixed. Our end construction take this redundancy into the account and remove the x wedge node. The load A minus is the previous node of the node A in the smaller UG. Then we delete edge number one and edge number two and end the edge from node A minus to the corresponding super low. Node A plus is the next node of the load A in the smaller EOG. Then we delete edge number three and edge number four and end the edge from the corresponding super low to load A plus. This leads to a more compacter construction of EUG without affecting the function of the universal edge inbounding. Based on our introduction, the size of EUG2 is two times of the size of EUG1 minus N. In our construction, the size of EUG1 is K times of the size of the smaller EOG1 plus N over K times of the size of K wave super low minus N combination nodes. The advantage of our construction over Venus framework is minus N highlighted in red. This leads to the size of EOG2 of our construction. Moreover, we prove that a low bound of 2.95 N log N for our construction when instantiated with a two-way super low of size 5, we can get a construction of EOG2 of size 3 N log N. The size of our construction 3 n log n is very closer to the lower bound 2.95 n log n. Finally, we visualize the comparison with the previous works. Our construction improves upon the best previous work by about 33%. There are some related works about universal circles. Thanks for listening.